ever wanted a Super Mario style level select system in your Unity project but didn't know where to start? So let's have a go at making one and see how we get on. I was asked by someone if I could help out with their level select code. So I said send me your project and I'll take a look and see what I can do. The original code that his level select system is based off comes from a Games Plus James tutorial. So I've reached out to James and he said it's perfectly fine to go ahead and make this tutorial using his base code. So let's have a look at what we're going to make. So let's hit play. Okay, so we've got a character at the bottom and we've got a level. Uh, as you can see, we've got a blocked off path. So I can move my character along, he'll automatically navigate corners. No matter what I try, I can't uh, get past the block section there, so I've got to proceed to level 1. Now a level panel has come up. Uh, this is where you can display your level name, etc, etc. You can add all sorts of panels and uh, just link them together. It all depends how you're going to handle your level data. So if we enter that level, it's going to load back. And you'll now see our path is unblocked and we can now progress along to level two but we can't get to that walk point so we walk along here it automatically navigate down to level two uh, our information panel comes back up again we we'll jump into the level that now unlocks the path to the walk point We can now walk up to the warp point and warp over to another island. Again, now we can go up to level 3, but we can't go any further because the other map points are locked off. So, uh, this is a system we're going to end up making. So, let's uh, start looking at how to set the project up. If you want to follow along with me exactly, or just want the project as a reference, I'll leave a link uh, to the project base files in uh, the description below, and that link will take you to my GitHub. So let's take a look at the project. First thing to note is I'm using uh, 2D Extras uh, for the prefab brush. So you may get errors if you import this project, depending on what version of Unity you're using. So if you want to jump onto Unity's GitHub and get uh, the correct version of 2D Extras for the version of Unity you're using, that should get rid of any errors if you're not using the same version of Unity as me. And secondly, I'm using Text Mesh Prime. So rather than look at this thing straight away, We've got a prefab, uh, which is my waypoint, and we'll look at that. It's just got a circle that collider as a trigger, and then we've just got a sprite, and I've just got a green sprite just so I can see the map point. And then we've got a prefab brush uh, that will paint that in. I've got five blank levels. But each level has a scene no script on it uh, with a current level index. So level 1 is index 0. Level 2 is index 1, etc. We'll have a look at that script in a minute. We've got the scene loader script. We've got a data manager. It's a simple uh, JSON data manager. And then that's just the data that we're going to want to store. Okay, on the main level select screen, we've got a cine machine camera, a camera confiner, and we just set the camera to follow the player. The panel canvas, uh, this is where you'll have all your panel images, so you can have things like leaves, coins, etc. I've just got an image and a text mesh pro text field. My tile map, we've got the background which is blank with nothing on it. We've got 
uh, the bridges and we've got a layer for our map points. Our player has just got a box collider on it and a player sprite with an animator. We've got up, down, left, right and idle animators and if we look in the actual animator nothing is connected just go from entry to idle we don't need anything in there next is the data manager if we look at that we've basically got a current level name and a list of block levels with a scene to load and a ball for if it's locked or not so let's take a look at the scripts that we've got so the scene loader, we've got a serialized uh, field uh, for an int, which is the current level index, which will relate to the level index of the list of block levels. And then we're just going to start the load level method here after three seconds. What we're going to do, we're going to check the current level index and we're going to add one to it. And then if that's less than the lock levels count, which is the list of lock levels, we will unlock the level, save the data, and then we'll uh, load back to the level select screen. In our default data, we've got a serialized uh, class of lock levels with a string seen to load and the ball is locked. And in our default data, We've got the current level name and then this list of lock levels. Finally, the data manager, we've just got a string for save file name and the folder name. Uh, we create a new uh, default data called game data. Uh, we've got a string for default path and file path. We create a static instance of this object and we won't destroy it on load so ideally you want to load your data manager uh, manager a splash screen at the start we just get our persistent data path and we'll add the folder name to it and then file name will uh, add the default path and the save file name we'll then check if our folder exists which is the default path this is this ball here if it doesn't exist, we create the directory and then we load the game data. And basically, first thing we do is we check if uh, the file exists. If it exists, we will load the game data from the JSON file. If not, we save the game data. And to save the data, we just write a string uh, to a JSON file. So that's all there is to the base project. Hopefully uh, it's clear enough, but if not, just uh, jump onto my GitHub, download it. You can have a look at all the scripts. Uh, for this system to work, you will need uh, some form of uh, list of lock levels. How you want to manage your own data is completely up to you. But we'll, you'll need a string for the current level name and some form of way of storing a list of uh, lock levels with the scene to load and a boolean for uh, if it's locked or not. Okay, in the next episode we'll look at creating the map point. So until then, see you later. Bye.